Karen, a racist woman, reported my cousin to the police, but I confronted her. Before continuing, I would like to invite you to subscribe to the Hista Reddit channel on YouTube and click the bell to receive notifications. My cousin, a 23-year-old, fulfilled her dream of having her own salon since childhood. She self-taught herself waxing, eyebrow design, and fell in love with makeup and hair. Everyone in our family sought her monthly before events for waxing, wax, and makeup. In 2020, she had a full-time job outside the beauty industry but decided to renovate her basement to set up a small salon space. Now, she dedicates her free time to serving clients in her home salon, receiving only compliments. Her sister collaborated on the renovations and helps promote the business on social media, while I assist with finances, budgeting, pricing, etc. We all support her and are very proud of her. The salon is our pride. However, we are in the midst of a pandemic, which greatly impacted her business. We adopted safety measures, and our team ensured compliance with COVID regulations in our city. This includes serving one client at a time, temperature measurement, use of masks, face shields, gloves, and salon cleaning after each client. When the city went into lockdown, the salon was closed as it was not considered an essential service. The incident occurred during this lockdown period. The salon's social media pages were updated to inform customers that we were closed. That's when Karen showed up. She saw a community poster from October explaining a discount offered by the salon on a specific package. Karen commented on the post, questioning how the salon could be operating during the lockdown while hers had to remain closed. It's essential to note that this post was made in October when salons could operate following safety rules, something Karen didn't bother checking in the more recent posts indicating that the salon was closed. My cousin didn't see the comment at that moment, but the next day, two police officers showed up at her door while she was at the doctor's. As my aunt doesn't speak English very well, the officers knew she would call my cousin asking her to come home. Maybe the officers didn't trust her, insisting on entering the house. My aunt had already called my cousin, concerned. When my cousin found out the situation, she asked if the officers had a warrant. Upon discovering they didn't, she instructed her mother not to allow them in and that she would be home in about 20 minutes. My cousin started driving home when my aunt called again to warn that the officers had simply left. Upon hearing this, my cousin felt more at ease and decided to continue her shopping as planned. However, the officers returned half an hour later and once again demanded the same thing. My aunt called my cousin again and asked her to come home. In the 20 minutes it took her to return, the officers had already left. They left a card and asked her to call back. My cousin talked to the officers and learned that someone had reported her business. They claimed she was operating during the lockdown and had evidence of it. My cousin knew this was a lie because the salon had been closed for a long time. My cousin had seen the previous comment and told me she knew exactly what the supposed evidence was, but the post in question was from October. My cousin was very angry because this post was by no means real evidence of her current operation in January. She was also upset that they wanted to enter her house without reason or a warrant when they could clearly see that my aunt didn't speak the language very well. At the end of the conversation, the officer apologized to my cousin, and we thought that was it. You must be wondering how we knew that Karen was the one who called the police because, well, she told us the next day that my cousin received a message she recognized as coming from the woman who commented on the post. Karen decided to pretend she was a client, can I schedule an appointment? My cousin replied and said, hi, dear, we're closed because of the lockdown. But as soon as the lockdown is over, we'll be happy to schedule your visit. Karen replied, Oh, my friend was there yesterday, my apologies. My cousin said, Well, you must have confused the day. The salon isn't receiving clients until the lockdown is over. Thank you. Karen continued, No problem. I didn't confuse the day, haha. I also know the police came because you're open. Take care. I won't stay here and feed your boring life. Maybe, to change, you can find another hobby instead of spreading lies and wasting people's time, including the police's time, or better yet, get a real job. Have a good night.
my cousin decided to block her at that moment. She was happy that everything was resolved with her sister, and I was still outraged by the racist comments and how someone can invent lies about a small business that led the police to scare my aunt. When my cousin told me about Karen, the fact that she had her own spa caught my attention. I did some research, and this brings us to revenge. I found out that Karen has her own place outside her home. Doing some investigations, I found comments from her clients on her business page that were posted on days when the city was in lockdown. The comments could be from clients who received services before the lockdown and only now had the opportunity to write a review. To make sure I found Karen's Instagram page, I decided to use her own weapon against her. I created a new account with any name and followed her page so she wouldn't see that I was my cousin's relative. Then, I messaged her asking about the prices of her services, Hi, I loved your options, I wanted to know how much you charge. Karen replied, Hi, girl, thank you very much. What service do you want, laughs? I said, I'm very interested in getting the BB Glow facial treatment, which is wonderful. Karen replied, My best seller, for sure. It usually costs $125, but it's on a buy two and get one free promotion. So, you buy one session and get another one for free, which is a great advantage compared to others. When are you free? Well, where do you live? I can't host anyone here during the lockdown, but I can go to my clients, so Karen wasn't working from her home due to lockdown restrictions but was going to her clients' homes, which is also against the rules. So, I made up that my house didn't have a suitable space and asked for her address to meet at a friend's house in a location between ours. She naively gave me her address during this period. I also tried to join other community groups she participated in. In a specific group, people from this community were promoting their small businesses. She recently made a post about discounts on her services for January. I quickly went online and reported her business still operating, including screenshots, her address, her full name, etc. A few days passed, and I had forgotten to check because I was busy with life again. I saw the incident report number on a post-it on my desk and decided to check. Apparently, this wasn't Karen's first offense. Karen had already been fined $750 for having a client in her home during the first lockdown in my city. After getting away with it, she decided to change her business model and go to the client's home. Now, she had been fined $10,000. I still followed her on Instagram, so I decided to take a look. She had made an inflamed speech about doing very bad things to the person who reported her. She also said she could no longer run her business. I don't know what kind of action the original police took against her, but I immediately deleted the old accounts and groups I had participated in. At the end of the day, she got what she deserved and I fulfilled my dream of pretending to be Sherlock Holmes. It was me, the idiot, the way I handled it. So maybe this Karen was just trying to eliminate her competition, and that's why she signed up to try to get services from them, not just to report the cousin, but to see how they would deal with it. The original post author, the operation here, kind of responded to that by saying that during my investigation, I realized that her business had many similar services referring to the part where Karen was making posts. Saying that she had made an inflammatory speech about how she was going to do very bad things to the person who reported her, someone asked if you sent the screenshot to the police. I'm sure this threat can be considered intimidation of a witness, which is probably worth considering if she is indeed disturbed. The OP responded, saying thank you for caring about our safety, all notes and conversations are recorded and saved. However, as I didn't use any of my real information for any of the accounts and used a very generic name as well, I don't think we will ever need this. This whole character idea seems very stupid now. Everyone was suffering, especially if you don't have a well-established business that can withstand the pandemic. So why lie to try to destroy another business that is already in trouble? If the reason is really because she wanted to eliminate a competitor, I don't think it would make much difference because everything was already halted at that moment. And, in the end, she got into trouble. A $10,000 fine is huge, it will take many sessions to recover all that money.
But if it were you in her place and someone came after you with lies like this, tell me how you would deal with it. Down below, idiotic or not idiotic and why? My fiancé had an accident and almost died. That's when my mother-in-law revealed to me that he cheated on me with an ex. Now, he is recovering, and I feel so guilty for wanting to end this relationship. I feel like a terrible person. I am a 33-year-old woman, and my fiancé is a 34-year-old man. We were going to get married on August 20th in a small ceremony. We have been together for six years and engaged for one of the best years of my life. He is amazing in every aspect, or at least I thought so. The accident happened six weeks ago. A drunk driver collided with my fiancé's car, and I spent the worst night of my life at the hospital, waiting for answers from the doctors. He spent hours and hours in surgery. His parents and brother were also there waiting. I always loved his family, and they loved me. His mother was one of my favorite people, and we got along great. She was happy to have me as her first daughter-in-law. She is religious, and when my fiancé was between life and death, she was concerned about his sins. So, she told me that he cheated on me two months ago with an ex he ran into. She explained that it was because of the wedding and the stress of planning it. Apparently, I was too stressed, stressing him out. He had a moment of weakness. It was a one-time thing, and he regretted it so much that he sought advice from his parents on what to do, and they told him not to tell anything, as long as he was sorry and as long as it was me he wanted. He should forget what he did and move on. His whole family knew. After the hospital, he went back to his parents' house because we live in a building without an elevator. I visit him every day. I haven't told him that I know. When his family is acting like nothing has changed, they are very happy that he is getting better and understanding. So, my presence next to him is very important according to him and his family. Now, both my fiancé and his parents are talking about us getting married on the day we set. After all, I feel terrible because I don't want this. Our relationship ended the moment I discovered the betrayal. I stayed because I still loved him and wanted him to feel better. I couldn't break his heart while he was recovering. I also thought the wedding had been postponed, and we would have more time for him to fully recover and be strong and independent again to be able to go out with a clear conscience. I tried to talk to his mother today, and she started breathing heavily and told me not to do this. She was wrong to tell me and I shouldn't take advantage of what she said in despair to punish him and ruin his will to live. He is still recovering and needs me. I have been thinking since my conversation with his mother about everything, and I am so angry with him that I am ashamed that even when I was worried about his life, I was very angry and hurt. We were going to have our wedding at this beautiful mansion he found, which includes everything with our dearest people. My best friend is a DJ, and my parents paid for everything, even though they are much poorer, so I don't understand where this stress came from. We sorted everything out in a week. I am so angry, and I keep swallowing it since the accident. I'm afraid of losing control soon. What do I do in this situation? His mother says she was wrong to tell me. The original post author says I shouldn't take advantage of what she said in despair. The mother doesn't realize that this lady, the person who posted the original, is about to marry this person forever and that she didn't want to continue with the marriage with him anymore. It's not revenge against the mother or anything else. That's why someone would want to continue with this, knowing this, and not knowing, doesn't improve things. It just makes the whole family get involved in something that the original post author's operation doesn't participate in. Regardless of what the family does with the information they have, none of this compares to the real fiancé, the guy who had the accident, who can go on as if nothing happened, and his family gave him an easy way out by blaming the stress of everything. I'm glad that the OP found out about this before getting married, so she doesn't waste time, 
because sooner or later this kind of thing always comes to light, no matter how much he or the family tries to hide it. And then both will likely have to go through a painful divorce. So, being honest about it before getting married seems to be the best situation for both people involved. But tell me how you see the situation, what would you do if you were in Opie's place, and whether it's idiotic or not and why? This is a story about my days as a paramedic. We received a call to a house where there was a bariatric patient who had fallen. The patient was morbidly obese, weighing around 30 stones, which is equivalent to 420 pounds. This story is not really about them, although there are many reasons why people reach that size, and we never judge, we only help. No, the problem here was a very nosy neighbor that we already knew before, and man, this guy was annoying. Our patient had a car and a disabled parking permit. They also had a disabled parking space designated by the council in front of their house, where the neighbor kept parking. There was a series of council letters about this, and a series of parking fines only served to make this guy more irritated. On the day this story happened, I attended the call saying the patient had fallen, and we went to the house. Sure enough, the neighbor was not only parked in the disabled space but had parked a second car blocking the patient's driveway. I assessed the patient and suspected he had a fractured hip, so we needed to get in. I sent my colleague to walk around to the neighbor to ask them to move the cars, and when they came back, I found out the neighbor had simply told my colleague to go to hell, it would take a moment without problems to get the message across. I called our control center on the radio and asked them to call the fire department and the police. We needed the fire department to help lift the guy, and the police to do a little parking control. The firefighters arrived first, and I spoke to the team leader to inform about the situation. A firefighter went to the house to ask the neighbor to move the car and heard the same response as my colleague. The message was relayed, and the surveillance chief asked me a question, is the patient's life in danger? I knew exactly where this was going, and it was time for our clueless neighbor to receive the message. My answer was yes, there is equipment I need to get into the house, and the garage entrance is blocked, preventing me from doing that. The surveillance chief told the fire truck driver to remove those vehicles, and it was gratifying to see the two cars dragged onto the street by the firefighters and the neighbor's face when he came out cursing and yelling. It was worth seeing his complaints to the police being ignored. Everyone was well aware of his obstruction history. In my clinical assessment that the patient's life was in danger, it was more than enough reason for the vehicles to be removed. I doubt that made our patients' lives easier, and unfortunately, the patient died a few months later without leaving the hospital. But it brought a smile to their face when we took them out, just like me, the idiot, dealing with it the way I did in a situation where the fire department itself knocks on your door and asks you to move the car. What do you think would happen if you didn't move the car? If you're parked in front of a hydrant, the firefighters will break your windows to pass the fire hose through. So, what do you think they're going to do if they can't reach it? I don't know how they removed those cars because they probably didn't have enough time to do a proper tow, since the patient's life was in danger, according to the original author here, and the operation said the vehicles were being dragged onto the street. So, I assume the fire truck or one of the vehicles just hit the neighbor's vehicles hard enough to drag them down the street, as the operation applies here. Few paramedics in this situation, how would you deal with such a neighbor hindering your ability to try to save someone's life? Tell me down below. My husband and I are about to get divorced because I'm pregnant. I am a 40-year-old woman, and my husband is 49. We have been married for 12 years, none of us has children, and it's one of the things that brought us together. Now I'm pregnant. I'm not religious or anything, but I'm 40 years old. He had a vasectomy, and this happened like a miracle. I want to stay with him, but I'm very scared. He made it clear that we are too old to be parents, and we hate children, and that if I want to stay with him, it will be the divorce. I hate children, 
but not this child. I want help from single parents, raw and honest opinions based on your experience. Is it worth it? Are my hormones just going crazy, making me emotional? Or is this true love? I love my husband so, so much, but it's kind of overshadowed compared to the emotions I'm feeling with my belly. Please help me. Jumping to the future update, many of you said that my marriage is already over because if I give up, there's a big chance I'll be hurt by my husband. So, I've been reflecting a lot on this. I love my husband, and even though we're parting ways, I don't want it to be because of resentment. I'm so sorry for everything that happened, but I can't control my feelings. I hope he forgives me, and my child forgives me. Would I be an idiot to choose my future child over my husband? It's a complicated situation because it seems the original author, the wife here, and the husband had agreed a long time ago that they didn't want children, going as far as the husband having a vasectomy, but now she's actually pregnant. Her whole view seems to have changed, and no matter how much she tries to suppress it by saying she wants to stay with her husband, deep down, it seems she wants this child more than anything. She even says that their marriage has cooled off, or more specifically, her love for her husband has cooled off. Apart from not wanting children from the start, I think the husband is worried because bringing a child into the world is not fair if he's already 50 years old before the child is born. It means that when this child is 10 years old, the husband will be 60, and, of course, when the child is 20, the father will be in his 80s. This is what the operation means when it says he made it clear that we are too old to be parents, and maybe the fact that the older you are when you have children, the higher the risk for the child. So, if you could give advice to the operation here, what would you say to her? Tell me down below. When you subscribe, don't forget to click on the bell to activate notifications and keep listening for all the stories in this series. Use the playlist at the top of the description. Thank you for watching this video from my channel Hista Reddit, where I tell real and interesting stories from Reddit. I hope you enjoyed and had fun with the situations I narrated. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and family and subscribe to the channel, leave your like, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. I really appreciate your support, and until next time.